In this lecture, we will go through some of the basic atmospheric flows that we can also call as winds. As we learned in the earlier lecture, the sun is the source of energy in the Earth system. This implies also to the energy of motion. The sun warms a surface and hot air above the surface is lighter than the air above and starts to rise. When rising, the air cools off and reaches supersaturation. Water condenses as clouds. Up in the atmosphere, the air cools by radiative cooling when it loses energy by radiation to the space. The sinking cool air can form an intensive downburst. Anyways, the rising hot air is replaced by a compensating flow that can be sensed as wind in the surface. In coastal areas, this convection mechanism often forms pattern called land-sea breeze. In daytime, when sun warms the land areas, convection is formed over land and compensating flow over the cooler water surface. Wind flows from the, from the ocean towards the land. In the night, the land areas cool down and convection forms over warmer waters. Wind flows from the land towards the ocean. This pattern often affects air quality in coastal cities. For example, Shanghai in China is a city where air quality is better in the afternoon when air flows from the ocean than in nighttime when the air flows from the industrial areas inland. So variations in heating lead to gradients in air pressure that makes the air flow. Usually by wind, uh, we mean horizontal flows of air as vertical movements of the air are much smaller, although important for weather phenomena. By surface wind, we mean wind at 10 meters above the surface. The pressure gradient makes the air to flow from higher pressure towards the lower pressure, as the imbalances in the atmosphere tend to find equilibrium. This is called the pressure gradient force. So the air flows from the higher pressure towards the lower pressure, but uh, the Earth is rotating, so the Coriolis effect turns the flow. Due to Coriolis effect, wind, winds tend to turn right in the northern hemisphere and left uh, in the southern hemisphere. We call it as the Coriolis force, although it's not a real force, but apparent due to our point of view in the surface of a rotating Earth. So in the northern hemisphere, all the winds tend to turn right, and in the southern hemisphere, to the left. At the equator, there is no Coriolis effect. In free atmosphere, the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force are the only forces affecting the motion of air. This means they tend to balance each other. This is called geostrophic equilibrium. So in the northern hemisphere, when the air flows from the higher pressure towards the lower pressure, the Coriolis force makes it to turn to the right until equilibrium is reached and these two forces balance each other. This means the air flows counterclockwise around the low pressure and clockwise around the high pressure. This is called the geostrophic wind. In free atmosphere, which means the troposphere above the boundary layer, where the surface friction does not affect the flows, the winds mostly are geostrophic. This means uh, from the pressure chart, you can see the direction and intensity of the winds. Values of surface pressure are shown as isobars on a weather chart, the black lines in this figure. The wind flows according to the isobars, counterclockwise around the low pressure and clockwise around the high pressure. The closer the isobars are to each other, the more intense the wind. Close to the surface, we need to take also the friction force into account. Friction is caused by the roughness of the surface. The friction slows down the flow. As the Coriolis force is dependent on the velocity of the flow, this weakens the Coriolis force and turns the flow towards the lower pressure. 
To summarize, in free atmosphere, geostrophic equilibrium applies and winds flow according to the isobars counterclockwise around low pressure and clockwise around high pressure. The geostrophic equilibrium does not apply to the tropics where there is no Coriolis effect. Close to the surface, friction slows down the motion and turns the wind towards the lower pressure. With the atmospheric flows, the air, including the air pollutants, travel all around the world. In only two weeks, air has traveled all around the hemisphere with atmospheric general circulation and atmospheric flow patterns. However, traveling across the latitudes is much slower. For the air to mix from hemisphere to another, it takes approximately one year. Vertically, the air mixes within the boundary layer in a day. Usually, the air pollutants are born in the boundary layer and thus mixed within the boundary layer during the day. For this air to mix with the upper parts of the atmosphere, it takes longer. So, how far and to where do the air pollutants travel is largely a question of atmospheric flow patterns. However, also the lifetime of the pollutants need to be taken into account, as well as removal processes of the pollutants, for example, rain.